The Isle of Portland on the UK's Jurassic Coast is joined to mainland Weymouth by a single causeway along the stunning Chesil Beach. Famous for the beautiful stone quarried on the island, it's popular with fossil hunters for its fascinating geological features. But Portland has way more heritage than just geology. And as you drive onto the island, you enter Castle Town, named from the 16th century castle built by Henry VIII. By visiting, you can find out more about its 450-year history and the parts it played in the First and Second World War. And trust me, it's a fantastic family day out. Also in Castletown and just down the road from Portland Castle, you can find out more about the role this area played in the Second World War by visiting the island's amazing D-Day Centre. The D-Day Centre is a tribute. It's a tribute to the American soldiers that left here from here in Weymouth and also to the people of the island that experienced that tumultuous time and that massive event of history. I volunteer because I've always loved history and here it's all living history so you can get in the tank, you can try on equipment, you, you know it's really really great stuff and, and I think that's a really special way of showing history. This little museum is probably one of the best I have ever been to. It's so interactive and interesting and informative. And, and obviously with the local history as well. It's the only museum I've ever been to where I can get on a World War II motorbike, I can get in jeeps, I can fire guns, I can dress up, I can feel the weight of the garments they wore. It's just everything and hear it as well. I have been climbing on the big gun with the shield and it was amazing. As you make your way onto the island towards Portland Bill, We'll come across St George's Church and its historic churchyard. It is open to visitors for tours and is in the custody of the Church's Conservation Trust. We've done a lot of work to clear its graveyard, revealing some interesting artefacts and stories. Um, it's set in approximately sort of five acres um, of land and we have roughly 2,500 graves, which has got about 7,000 plus um, people are buried here that we know of anyway. St George's is built on Portland Stone and is built from Portland Stone. The church was designed and built by Thomas Gilbert um, and it was finally consecrated in 1766. Last year, volunteers cleared most of the grass in here and it's created a lot of interest locally from people and they've given donations towards buying a strimmer and putting turf down and um, doing work on our crater that we've sort of made a feature of. In July 1942, a bomb landed in St George's churchyard that scattered the, the stones and they were like just left like that for many years. It was decided that a feature should be made of it to remember what happened there, to commemorate that, that moment. On the east side of the island, near the 12th century Rufus Castle, you'll find Portland's Museum. Founded by the renowned paleobotanist Dr. Murray Stopes, the museum has a wealth of artefacts and exhibitions that tell the story of the island. Portland Museum is made up of two cottages um, purchased by Mary Stopes in 1930. She was the youngest doctor of science in Britain. There's also um, the galleries that were built in the 1970s to house more of the collection. It inspires people to find a kind of curiosity for where they live. And then you can expand that curiosity of when you go to a new place, you can go, OK, what sort of weird little bits of history can I find here that you know the locals know about, but I as a tourist might not? It's a very personal and connected experience to the island and the people. As you reach the southern end of Portland, you can't miss the famous Portland Lighthouse and Visitor Centre. Portland Bill Lighthouse is extremely popular. Most of the visitors who visit Portland specifically come to visit the lighthouse here at the end of the island. The lighthouse is a fully operational lighthouse, been operational since 1906. The lighthouse keeper retired in 1996, although it is still fully operational. All the operations are managed from the operations centre in Harwich. This lens was situated up at the top of the lighthouse until October last year. This was brought down here and the lens was replaced with LEDs. For the brave, you can climb the 153 steps to the top of this working lighthouse and find out more about how it operates. What a view from the top. Museums contain such interesting social and cultural value that it's value that can't really be put into words. You can't put like a monetary value on it. 